The overturning of Roe versus Wade will mean absolutely nothing to wealthy white women. Wealthy white women never went to abortion clinics in the first place. Let me give you the playbook. And this is something, well, let me go ahead and give you a little historical perspective. Uh, from 1991 to 97, I worked at Northside Hospital. And there was a common practice that happened through the emergency room in Northside Hospital. Women would come in for a DNC, a dialage and cuttage, which later on I learned that was an abortion. What they would do, because I remember one night, it was like 10 o'clock, this young girl comes in, her and her family, she's crying and everything. And essentially their doctor told them to come to the emergency room and they did a DNC in the emergency room. And I actually had to go get what came out. So I got the little bag, cause it's a red bag, right? So I'm going to the lab and then I get into histology and pathology where they're going to look at the contents and the girl opens up the bag and I see baby parts. The girl had had an abortion, which was paid for by her insurance. Let me say this again. The overturning of Roe versus Wade means absolutely nothing to wealthy white women. Now, let me go ahead and give you what is going to happen. Now, the economics of abortion, all the federal aid, all the state aid, that's about to go away. What you're going to see is uh, an emerging underground abortion industry. And it's going to be like buying weed or buying cocaine. You just can't walk in there. You got to be referred by someone to gain access to these services. And just like weed and marijuana, it's going to be quite expensive. So this is going to reduce the number of abortions dramatically because everyone is not going to live in an environment where they're going to have that kind of hookup. Now, historically, wealthy white women typically didn't get in trouble because they were on birth control. But every now and then they would slip up and they would get pregnant and they would go to their doctor and they do the DNC and have insurance pay for it. Because they once again, wealthy white women never, ever went to abortion clinics. What's up, guys? You've got four days to get into the intellectual property school. So let me tell you what's happening right now. I have someone making some shirts because everyone's going to get some swag. There's going to be a group, not on Facebook, but a group for us to come together. And in the beginning months, it's not going to be that many people there. I think I've got like 12 people in the group, and I think I've got like 100 people signed up for the course. So we will see how that goes. But more importantly, if you are thinking about it, stop waiting. And let me tell you why you should stop waiting. You need to start preparing yourself for the next recession. Um, right now, there's another person who has an online course. And I was, uh, uh, was looking through it, and she is kind of like scratching the surface of what's possible. And she did like 10 million last year. So. Once again, stop waiting because first thing you gotta do, everyone is going to take home economics. Everybody's taking home economics, everyone. Because what is the use in teaching you how to make more money when you're not appropriately managing the money you already make? This is one of the fallacies that I see in personal finance. No one talks about personal uh, appropriate money management the way that I do, no one. You need your long-term emergency fund because as you go ahead and get your intellectual property business rolling and there's the money coming in, you're not quitting your job because what's, that, what's gonna happen with that money? First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna stack up our long-term emergency fund. Then we're gonna stack up our short-term emergency fund. Then we're gonna stack up our family operating account. Then if you have debt, we're gonna get rid of all debt. And then maybe you can start thinking about quitting your job. Because one of the things that kills people is they want to quit their job. And there's so many charlatans and snake oil men like, hey, you take my course, quit your job in 30 days. Uh, as a person who has not had a job in 24 years, uh, there's some realities that, you know, if you're just barely making it, like I'm a small business that makes you 25 to 3,000 a month, my health insurance is 450 a month and it's just me. If I had a family, my health insurance would be 1,500 bucks a month. So before you leap off into full self-employment, you need to be breaking in some coins. You need to be 20, 30,000 a month. So you can buy your health insurance, so you can buy appropriate things, so you can be set. And this is the thing that's really, really crazy. Within six to 12 months, because this is for the person who is starting from scratch. This is the person who's never had a YouTube channel. This is for the person who's never had a podcast. This is for the person who never had a blog. This is for the person who just consumes the internet and they've never actually made money from the internet. I've been making money from the internet for about 20, um, 21 years between eBay, Amazon, and now my thing. I've been making money online for 23 years. And the average person doesn't make money outside of maybe putting some stuff on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or something like that. So this course is gonna be geared for the raw rookie, the person with no experience. And also, <clears throat> you the course will be self-paced. Because I'm getting a lot of questions. It's like, all right, there will be some live classes, but the classes will be recorded. So if you got to work, you got to do something, you can catch the classes later. And what I'm going to try to do 
because it ain't football season yet. I'm going to try to do the stuff at Sunday and maybe Saturday, but once football season comes, uh, I'm going to stop that and move it to a day, uh, evening class during the week. I might make it 7.30ish, you know, so everyone can get in and, uh, you know, because I'm going to check your schedules and stuff. But stop waiting. Go ahead and enroll in the intellectual property course. Links below. First comment, first comment, and links in the description because this is probably going to be the greatest thing I've ever done because this is the first course that I'm actually teaching you exactly what I do. And I see YouTuber after YouTuber making these dumb, 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 dumb mistakes making YouTube videos every day. I find someone who does it and they literally are just pushing money away from this. Like, I don't want no money. I don't want no money. So enroll in the internet property school today. The intellectual property school today. Internet, it could be called the internet because this is where the money comes from. This is where the money comes from. They never did. They never did. Now, what's going to happen is poor black women, poor white women, poor Asian women, and poor Hispanic women are going to be forced to have babies that they don't want because they're not going to be able to get the hookup in the underground abortion clinic because once again you know like you have to know someone to know someone to know someone to get a connect and that's just what it's going to do because the doctors who are going to run these underground abortion clinics if they get caught they're going to lose their medical license and they're going to go to jail so it's going to be very cloak and daggerish very cloak and daggerish to gain access to these services and if you're disconnected from the community in that regard where you don't know anyone, it's gonna be very hard for you to gain access to these services. So for white women who were having the highest number of abortions because the sector of poor white women was quite large, this is something that the, um, what is it called? Not, not the Ku Klux Klan, but I forget, there, there's all these little race groups, but um, this is one of the things that they have been lamenting for years, that they knew that white women were aborting white babies at a very high rate, and for white people have a negative population growth. They're not replacing themselves as they die. This is statistically true. So they're, they're like cheering this on, because now we're gonna have all of these white babies that wouldn't have been here before but this is going to be the ramifications of this decision once again wealthy white women wealthy black women wealthy asian women this the overturning of roe versus wade means absolutely nothing to them because they're still going to be able to get these services performed under d and c but what you're going to have are a bunch of children who are not wanted be born. And this is going to, these children are gonna be abused, they're gonna be molested, and this is going to dramatically tamp up the worthless people, the mental illness, um, infant, infant abuse, yes, infant abuse. One of the most dangerous times for a baby is when his mother suffers postpartum depression. There have been many women who have killed their babies. No one talks about this. No one talks about this. There have been many women that have choked out their babies because they had postpartum depression, which is a very real thing. So you're gonna see a spike in infant side. You're gonna see a spike in domestic abuse and child abuse. You're gonna see a spike in um, trafficking because these children, because once again, when you are a child that is born into a situation where you're not wanted, all types of social ills can happen to you. More than likely, you're going to become a criminal More than likely, because you're not going to be loved. You're not going to be protected. You're not going to be cared for. So this is going to create a segment of society that's going to be hyper uh, damaged, hyper damaged. So. Once again, and let's talk about Roe versus Wade. If you remember when Kavanaugh was being confirmed to be on the Supreme Court and how he blatantly lied that he said he would protect Roe versus Wade. And the, 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 this was the situation. It was Kavanaugh. It was another one. They all say, yeah, 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 yeah. We're not going to touch Roe versus Wade. Why do you think that the conservative party wanted conservative justices? This was just a matter of time before this happened. Once again, this is just a matter of time, just a matter of time, because I am not surprised that those conservative majority of the Supreme Court of the United States of America voted to overturn Roe versus Wade. 
not surprised at all. I'm not shocked. And this is why I haven't touched on this because if you knew the demographics of the Supreme Court, you this this isn't surprising at all. This isn't surprising. People are like, oh my gosh, they turned Roe over. Really? You shocked? What America do you live in? This could have been predicted. I like, because I didn't speak on it here on YouTube, but I was just like, it's just a matter of time. But once again, the economics of abortion. Once again, I'm going to say it. Rich white women will not be impacted. They still will have access to these services. And what's going to happen is this is going to push a lot of women. Women are going to have to drop out of college because they got pregnant. Women are going to um, this is going to retard their entrance into the workforce. There's going to be so many ramifications because of this decision that are going to be economically bad for a single woman who got pregnant from a hookup. And that happens quite a bit, uh, quite, quite a bit, quite a bit. And, you know, this girl, she's in the bar. She sees this guy. He's sexy. They go in the bathroom. They have sex. Next thing you know, she's pregnant. She doesn't even know this guy's last name. She doesn't even know where this guy is. And she's scared and she's like terrified. And this is one of the reasons like um, I believe in a woman's right to have abortion because once again, there is nothing worse than a child coming into an environment where he isn't wanted or she isn't wanted. It is one of the most terrible things you can do to a human being. So in my opinion, it is better to abort that child than to raise that child and abuse that child, in my opinion. And to go a little further, since women have to, had, <laughs> had their issue, men should have had the option to opt out if they didn't want to be a father. That was my bone of contention with that because women could, and right now, if a woman gets pregnant and she doesn't want that baby, she can go to the hospital, she can go to many places and drop that kid off and nobody's going to say boo. If a woman doesn't want to have a baby, you know, and this is what's going to happen. You're going to see a dramatic spike in orphans and ch kill kids in protective services and ch wards of the state. You're going to see a spike in that because most white women, most black women, most Hispanic women, small percentage of Asian women, or poor and they they just like once again i estimate these underground abortion services are going to be between 1500 to 2500 right now i think you can get an abortion for you know i i'm just guessing because i don't know um i'm going to say between 250 and 400 dollars i think that's what you can get an abortion now because a lot of these abortion clinics have additional funding from the state and federal agencies so that's about to go away. Uh, a lot of these abortion clinics are, are going to close. This money's not going to be coming to them. And for a woman who isn't managing her womb correctly, um, like I said, things can happen. You know, there have been very cases of women who got pregnant on birth control. It's very, very rare. But what's going to happen is women are going to have to be hyper vigilant about getting pregnant. They're going to have to be hyper vigilant because now the get out of jail card that used to be easy access to abortion is now gone. And this is the, this is going to change the lives of a lot of women. There were women who were going to be attorneys and doctors and their first or second year of college, they're going to get pregnant and they're going to have to drop out. This is going to totally change the trajectory of the lives of many, many women. And this you know, for the alt-right, that was the group, the alt-right, the conservative party. These are the group of people who want all of these poor, unwed, white mothers to have these children because their population is dwindling. And it's just a matter of time before Hispanics are the largest population group in America. It's just a matter of time. And they don't want that to see because as that group of Hispanics grow, and then they start to get more members of Congress and they get more members of the Senate and they get more representative in state and local government. You're going to see Hispanic policies and Hispanic agendas push forward. 
is coming. It's just a matter of time. And the alt-right is just definitely afraid of that. I'm gonna tell you a story. When I used to live in Hawaii, and Hawaii was mostly Asian, Filipino, Hawaiian, Samoans, Japanese, and I used to see white people in Waikiki looking for each other because they were a minority. And I feel for, you know, but it will, you're a minority in paradise, you know? You got the tropical drinks, you got the beach, you got the luau music. It's really, really cool, but they be looking for each other. And I remember I was rocking a University of Alabama hat and this white guy comes up to me, roll tide! He was so happy to see someone that had an affinity for what he happened. And we just talked, I went to the bar, had a few drinks. He was just so happy to see another Alabama fan. It was crazy. Um, I believe Alabama went to the Aloha Bowl last year too. But yeah, so these are my thoughts on Roe versus Wade. It's gonna make the socially, economically oppressed even more socially and economically oppressed. Oppressed. Uh, I mean, it's just a matter of time. Because, once again, abortion has always been about economics. And it's been poor women who have been getting the majority of abortions, or the totality of abortions, because like I said, rich white women don't go to abortion clinics. They never did. Um, and it's, it's kind of interesting because you know, a lot of people are acting like they were shocked because the GOP has been stacking the Supreme Court. Remember when Obama was support, supposed to appoint a Supreme Court justice and they stammered him and they blocked it? This was part of the plan because see, the Supreme Court of America is going to be conservative for probably the next 25 years. Well, Clarence Thomas is kind of old, but a lot of the new justices are quite young, are very young. Kavanaugh, I think he's in his 40s, late 40s, early 50s, so he could conceivably sit on the Supreme Court for another 20 years or even 30. And um, the new black Supreme Court justice they put up, she'll be around a while because she's quite young, but unless you know, something happens because this is what I'm kind of predicting. Um, if the economy melts down the way that it looks like it's going to melt down, Joe Biden may be a one term president, which means that by the time another Supreme Court justice slot opens up, we will have a Republican president, which means the court's just going to get stacked. It's just going to be stacked for decades. And once again, the economics of abortion like you know i used to participate in the underground economy in the in the uh, selling of guns i used to get so many guns out of storage units and i can tell you i've literally had people pay me four to five times the price of a gun to get a gun that wasn't in the system that wasn't registered so they can literally have a throwaway gun and the time I bought the M16s, which I did sell legally because I found myself a dealer and you know, he wanted half and I said, bro, all, I got the guns. All you're doing is, you know, signing paperwork, you know, a thousand bucks per gun, if, you know, take it or leave it. And he took it because I had like 27 M16s and those bad boys sold for like 20,000 a piece. And because the first thing he did, he, he looked at all the numbers, the serial numbers, and they weren't stolen. That was the first thing he was concerned about, that they were stolen. And those were the only guns that I sold through proper channels. Um, but I participated in the underground economy, and like, you will see a lot of rogue doctors, and also, there will be doctors from a philosophical standpoint that feel that abortion should be accessible, and what I see happening is the abortion travel, travel for abortion, because abortion will still be legal in other countries and you're gonna have women hopping on planes to go get abortions. So that's gonna be a new industry. Uh, I don't know if abortions, because I don't know where abortions are legal or not legal, because I think they're legal in Mexico. I'm not 100% sure, but 
you will have people hopping on planes, women, to get abortions because they can't get them here. So that's some else that's going to grow. And, you know, like I got to say, man, be careful with your womb, young ladies. Be careful because the get out of jail card has been eviscerated. It's gone. And that ain't the only change that's going to happen. Because here's the thing. During this global reset, during this recession, a lot of people are going to be set back. Now, this for women folk has been a huge setback because it was my body, my choice, right? You think this is the only thing that is coming? You think this to see what the new world order is going to do is engineer policy through new government regulation. This ain't the only thing that's coming. This ain't the only thing that's coming. Um, now, black folks, we still gonna have the right to vote. Don't worry about that. They ain't going nowhere. But through policy and the creation of new, new economies, new economic realities, we're going to see a lot of stuff change in the next 10 years. We may see uh, the introduction of universal basic income, but women, Right now, manage your womb appropriately. No more just hopping on penises. No more just not taking birth control. I used to deal with this girl who wasn't on birth control. And she's like, don't come inside me. And I was like, you know you can still get pregnant whether I come inside you or not. Because if I get close and pre-cum comes out, um, um, you can still get pregnant. And I actually had to stop dealing with her because I like the bust. I like to oh, skeet, 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 you know? So I actually stopped dealing with her because um, one of the things that I have come to understand as a man is if a woman doesn't want to get pregnant, she will take measures. She like, this is one of the reasons I love white girls. White girls like, I ain't having no babies. I've had white girl after white girl tell me, having a baby as a single mother is the quickest way to poverty. They ain't doing it. I can skeet all day because they're on birth control. They never missed their birth control. Now, Hispanic women, eh, <laughs> it's a little different, little different. Now, I will say black girls, if there's one group of women that has consistently brought up the condom conversation, it has been black women. A lot of black women are on that condom tip. So once again, um, I think that black single mother births are down. I think statistically they're down because a lot of young black women, you ain't getting up in there without a condom. So, and then Asian women, bless their hearts. Yeah, daddy, give it to me raw. <laughs> give it to me raw. But these are the economics of abortion. This is what's coming. And once again, ladies, be very careful with your womb because it's going to be very expensive to solve that problem in the future. Very expensive. Very expensive. What's up, guys? You've got four days to get into the intellectual property school. So let me tell you what's happening right now. I have someone making some shirts because everyone's going to get some swag. There's going to be a group, not on Facebook, but a group for us to come together. And in the beginning months, it's not going to be that many people there. I think I've got like 12 people in the group and I think I've got like 100 people signed up for the course. So we will see how that goes. But more importantly, if you are thinking about it, stop waiting. And let me tell you why you should stop waiting. You need to start preparing yourself for the next recession. Um, right now, there is another person who has an online course and I was, uh, uh, was looking through it and she is kind of like scratching the surface of what's possible. And she did like 10 million last year. So once again, stop waiting because first thing you got to do, everyone is going to take home economics. Everybody's taking home economics, everyone, because what is the use in teaching you how to make more money? when you're not appropriately managing the money you already make. 
This is one of the fallacies that I see in personal finance. No one talks about personal uh, appropriate money management the way that I do. No one. You need your long-term emergency fund because as you go ahead and get your intellectual property business rolling and that's the money coming in, you're not quitting your job because what's that? What's going to happen with that money? First thing we're going to do is we're going to stack up our long-term emergency fund. Then we're going to stack up our short-term emergency fund. Then we're going to stack up our family operating account. Then if you have debt, we're going to get rid of all debt. And then maybe you can start thinking about quitting your job. Because one of the things that kills people is they want to quit their job. And there are so many charlatans and snake oil men. It's like, hey, you take my course, you quit your job in 30 days. Uh, as a person who has not had a job in 24 years, uh, there's the realities that, you know, if you just barely making it, like have a small business that makes you 25 to 3,000 a month, my health insurance is 450 a month and it's just me. If I had a family, my health insurance would be 1500 bucks a month. So before you leap off into full self-employment, you need to be breaking in some coins. You need to be at 20, 30,000 a month. So you can buy your health insurance, so you can buy appropriate things, so you can be set. And this is the thing that's really, really crazy. Within six to 12 months, because this is for the person who is starting from scratch. This is the person who's never had a YouTube channel. This is for the person who's never had a podcast. This is for the person who never had a blog. This is for the person who just consumes the internet and they have never actually made money from the internet. I've been making money from the internet for about 20, um, 21 years between eBay, Amazon, and now my thing. I've been making money online for 23 years. And the average person doesn't make money outside of maybe putting some stuff on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or something like that. So this course is going to be geared for the raw rookie, the person with no experience. And also, <clears throat> you the course will be self-paced because I'm getting a lot of questions. It's like, all right, there will be some live classes, but the classes will be recorded. So if you got to work, you got to do something, you can catch the class later. And what I'm gonna try to do, cause it ain't football season yet. I'm gonna try to do the stuff at Sunday and maybe Saturday, but once football season comes, uh, I'm gonna stop that and move it to a day uh, evening class during the week. I might make it 7.30ish, you know, so everyone can get in and, uh, you know, cause I'm gonna check your schedules and stuff, but stop waiting, go ahead and enroll in the intellectual property course links below first comment first comment and the links in the description because this is probably going to be the greatest thing i've ever done because this is the first course that i'm actually teaching you exactly what i do and i see youtuber after youtuber making these dumb 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 mistakes making youtube videos every day i find someone who does it and they literally are just pushing money away from this like i don't want no money i don't want no money so enroll in the Internet Property School today, the Intellectual Property School today. Internet, it could be called the Internet because this is where the money comes from. This is where the money comes from.